Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Paron channel. This time I'm going to be replacing the cells inside this battery operated shaver. I've had this shaver for uh, 25 maybe more years so it's rather long in the tooth like I am. Now I'm going to be replacing the cells with these two Energizer nickel metal hydride uh, rechargeables. They've come out of a retail pack. Nominal capacity of these is 2300 milliamp hours. Now I have read online that the cells inside this unit are much less than 2300 milliamp hours and that causes a problem with the charging. I'm going to cross my fingers to start off with and hope that everything's okay, but I will do a test to see how many milliamp hours we get into these cells before the charger times out, if indeed it does time out. Anyway, slight confession, um, so well, two confessions. One, I have replaced the cells in this shaver previously, but I used the recommended cells. That was fine. They lasted several years. Uh, now, I've just been into the shaver um, a couple of days ago to give it a good clean inside because really, I don't expect you to look at my grey whiskers inside this uh, shaver. It wasn't a pretty sight. Anyway, without further ado, let me uh, show you how to get into this shaver. shaver rather. Let's just pop the top off and get rid of the uh, shaver foil and the cutter. And the way to get into these shavers is fairly straightforward but is not uh, obvious by just looking at the unit and that's to prise off the end, the plastic end here. So as he, just get underneath this edge. See if I can get my fingernail. There we go. Then just remove that piece. That then gives access to these two side pieces here, which just simply um, come off. Isn't it amazing? I do like the way that this uh, shaver is designed, I have to say. It just seems to be so well put together and has lasted so many years in service. It's, it's really quite fantastic. Um, now, the next thing is we've got four screws here. Now, these screws are um, Torx bits, but they do actually have a flat slot uh, across them, so you could use a flat blade if, if you wanted. But I'll just um, take these four out. Let's get them unscrewed first. One, two, three, four. And then uh, this clamshell. Oh, not really a clamshell, but these two halves come apart. Let's see if I've got that uh, last screw out properly. Let me just give it a quick twiddle. There we go. And we're all the way in. See if we can't leave, lose those screws. And the two cells, as I say, set right in the middle here. And the previous ones, um, as I say, I used the uh, proper ones. So same size, double A. Now this printed circuit board, or is it easy just to take the whole motor mechanism out, just put that to one side. And then we're looking at the uh, printed circuit board. And there you go, look, it's, there's no screws holding this thing in. It's fantastic. It's just slotted in position. There's one plastic uh, riser there, which just holds it in position whilst you put all the other components together. And that's it. Anyway, let's focus in on the batteries. So yeah, we've got two batteries here, plus minus, plus minus the other side. And so obviously they're in uh, series. Yeah, we've got uh, this track going across here. We've got a zero ohm resistor, which goes across to the other tab. And then there's the other tabs down at the bottom here. So what I'll do is I'll move across to the desoldering bench and I'll just remove the solder from these pads and pop the cells out and then I'll come back. So here we are back at the bench with the two cells removed. That wasn't too difficult at all. I just used a solder sucker on the four pads, cleaned them up a little bit with um, some uh, solder braid, but uh, yeah they were fairly easy to take out. You will notice if you've never changed the cells in your shaver that there is some sticky tape on there and that will make it a little bit more tricky because you don't know when the uh, solder's let go because it's still held on by the tape. But yeah, just be, uh, just be gentle with it and remove those. I think I'm going to clean that up actually and maybe try and use a new piece of tape if I can find some. Just having a look at the cells themselves, 
Now, I must have bought these, as I say, it's a long time ago since I did this uh, battery replacement, but um, I must have reused these end pieces off the old batteries and uh, spot welded them back on to the new cells. The capacity of these cells is, can't quite see it on that one, it's a bit better on this one here, uh, 1600, now I'm assuming that means 1600 milliamp hours, that's not a, a wild um, unreasonable thing to assume. These being 2300, they're going to be a significantly higher capacity, which is great for one from one point of view about using the shaver for a longer period between uh, charging. But yes, does the charging circuit on this printed circuit board allow us to actually charge a 2300 milliamp hour cell? We'll find that out. Anyway, so I'll get this cleaned up and we'll get some tabs somehow on here. I might fashion some new ones. The slots are quite wide there so I might be able to get some thicker nickel strip in through those slots there. Let's have a look. Okay I'm just uh, tin snipping some strips out of this uh, waste nickel strip that I had. So I'm just gently, I mean they go a bit crinkly the tin snips but once you've uh, got that off it's a fairly straightforward job just to flatten that out and then with any luck that's just about the right size to go all the way through the board the slot is quite reasonably wide just do the last one Mangle that up very slightly. Let me just shorten that off. That should be long enough, plenty long enough. That's great. Okay. Okay, I've got one of the cells just mounted in a lump of blue tack here, and I'm going to weld, spot weld one of these nickel strips on. Let's see if I can do this okay. The first one, I'm not too worried about the orientation. Well, I would like to get the length roughly right. Just make sure we've got slightly too much hanging out over the end. Got two electrodes here, got my foot switch. Uh, I'm just going to get onto the metal strip there and a distance away. Don't press too hard. Oh, there we go. Got a bit of expulsion. Let's just check to see. That seems to be on very well. So I'll just chop the excess off this end. Just have a quick check. That looks good. Okay. Now to get the orientation okay, I need to make sure that it's pointing in the same way a little bit trickier. I think that looks a bit better that way around. And the pip being smaller surface area, that's a little bit more tricky too. Now, there's no need for you to spot weld this. Um, most people, I guess, don't have a spot welder. You can solder these tabs on the end, or you can solder a piece of copper wire on the end that's suitable sort of uh, gauge. But um, I'm going to use my spot welder because I've got it. So I'll pin that in position. Put the other probe down, making sure they don't touch each other. Apply a bit of pressure. There we go. Probably a bit too much energy in this one actually, but um, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Let me just take the excess off that. And uh, that should be good to go. So I'll do the other cell and we'll come back. So here we have the cell already into the printed circuit board, not soldered in yet, but just to show you how those tabs fit nicely through the slots, no dramas there at all. 
What I'm going to do though with uh, to test this device is I'm going to put the two cells in but not complete all the joints. I'm going to leave one joint here disconnected so I can get an ammeter between those two points, see what current is flowing into the cells and also I'll be able to test the, uh, the voltage of the cells to see whether they're rising to the terminal voltage that a nickel metal hydride should raise to. Now these two cells have been fully discharged to one volt, which is the terminal voltage at the, uh, for, the, for zero percent for. So we'll get to see whether when the charger is connected, how long it charges the batteries and how much uh, energy it puts into the cells. Anyway, let me get this soldered in and we'll get a setup, a test setup uh, rigged in front of the camera. Okay, I've got everything soldered up. Um, I took a a uh, closer look at some of these connections and in fact uh, they're not in series aren't these two cells are actually in parallel so I won't be able to test the current just going through one of these joints um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test the current that's going in through the 12 volt input here obviously the circuit will use a certain amount of uh, current uh, for its own operation but most of it should be going into the cells so we should be okay just have to be careful. I've got everything set up here. We've got the ammeter. I've got these set on uh, milliamps. I've got the uh, 12 volt supply crock clipped, crock clipped up here. All I need to do is connect these two leads and the negative is tied to this metal Let's just make sure that that doesn't get on. Oh, that is the negative side of the battery. So that should be okay on there. And then there's just a little part exposed on the top for the positive. So if I just carefully switch this on, what can possibly go wrong? You see there, whoops, the green light has come on for the power and then the charging light has come on. Um, it's probably not the best of connections. I think I'll put it down this way up. Oh, oops, there we go, it's snapped off already, I think. Let me just see if we can't get this set up a little bit better than this. Okay, that looks more stable. In fact, it's negative, but hey ho, wrong way around. That's okay. Um, we've got 312, 313 milliamps. I'm going to guess that there's 300 milliamps going into those cells now. That's only 300 divided by 2, so 150 milliamps each. I guess we can do a quick calculation, maybe show that on the screen, because my mental arithmetic's not that quick. But 2,300 milliamp hours, roughly, at 150 milliamps is, um, yeah, it's a couple of hours at least, isn't it? So uh, let's uh, see how we go with that. Well, that was slightly less than ideal. Sorry about that, but the uh, camera gave up during the charging process. But I think everything was okay. It took about um, somewhere between two and three hours. I came back to the garage and it had finished. Uh, and as I say, the camera had already switched off. But uh, just to do a quick demonstration, um, I'll just plug it back into the socket. Charging socket here. Uh, charging socket is currently switched off, so if I just switch that on, you'll notice if I bring this a bit closer, a little green light comes on, and then there's a charging light coming on over here. Um, we'll have a look at the voltages, but the voltages across the cell is now around about 1.4, which is the terminal voltage for nickel metal hydride cells. And um, the only thing, that, I mean, the, there's no smarts on this board apart from there's this chip here which is a comparator chip, an operational amplifier and look I'm not clever enough to work out exactly how the circuit's working but I'm assuming it's looking at the uh, battery voltages and waiting for a certain voltage to be achieved and then switching a transistor, a transistor off sorry, and uh, switching the charging off. Um, I'll just put that back down on the deck, show you the voltages of the cells as they currently are. Let me just zoom in a little bit. That might make it a bit more uh, interesting. 
bring those into the frame. I can do this without shorting anything out. Not too sure which way around we are, but let's have a look. So 1.4, and that's currently under charge. And then we'll have a look at the other one. Come on. Hello. These probes are not very sharp. There we go, 1.4. So there the charging light has just gone off. And um, so yeah, these uh, cells are, are now fully charged. I have um, cleaned the board up a little bit, um, got the uh, solder flux off and what have you, so I think it's ready just to uh, put back together. Just one other thing before I do put it back together again, I think I'm going to just clean up these pads here. These pads um, and actually these little leaf um, contacts here could do with a little bit of a clean up. I think I'll just use solder flux on there to try and clean that up. Maybe just a bit of uh, IPA on that one. Over the other side of the board is um, a couple of pads there which are actually the contacts for the motor and again these pads don't look too bad actually um, but these motor contact pads could do with cleaning so I'll clean those first. Just hold on a second. Okay there we have it. Um, cleaned up those two pads there as I say with just a little bit of uh, flux. Uh, cleaned off those two pins there just with isopropyl alcohol and similarly the two motor contacts. So let's see if we can't get this back together. It's fairly straightforward. As I say, it's uh, been put together rather nicely, or designed rather nicely. Let's pop the uh, PCB back into the holder. So we've got a little pip here that we locate the printed circuit walking in. That just drops in. There's no other connections or screws or anything to do there. The next thing, just a little bit tricky, we've got to get this um, control arm here onto this pip here. And that's just a little bit. So see that it doesn't drop directly onto there immediately. Let's see if we can't. There we go. It's a combination of the um, sliding switch mechanism on the back. Oh, there we go. It's on already. It's a combination of, of this uh, to get that pip through there. So we can see that it's working already. Let's pop the other side of the clamshell on, just making sure everything is in position. Looks good. Just drop that in. Again, that's not going in exact. There we go. So it's a bit of a hook on the top first. And then that shell is nicely together. We'll bring the four screws in. Very quickly put these in. And just checking. Yeah, seems good. Number two. Number three. And number four. And just as I was saying, that, that charging um, seemed to work fine. I'll put a calculation up on the screen now just to sort of do a rough estimate of how long. I don't think the larger capacity batteries have been a problem at all. Not in this particular shaver, as I said, because it's got such a basic circuit in there. There's no smart chip or charging chip in there, which is monitoring time as far as I can see. If there is, if anybody else knows better than I do, please say so. And we've got the two sides to go on, and is there a left and there is a left and a right here because there's a little arrow there for the sliding switch. That just goes straight on like that, straight on like that. And then the last charging port, does this look symmetrical? It does, I think. Now best to get this in. Are we just mashing it in? Or or do we need to do it more gently? Does it go in from one end as it came out in that sense? As it was. There we go. Yep. Too easy. There we go. That seems to work fine. 
And the special treat, rather than putting in the old cutter and the blade, ta-da! Oh, it's a bit dusty, it's been out here for quite a while, but it's a new box of cutter and foil. So we'll put that on and we'll go have a shave. But I won't show that on video, I promise. Not a pretty sight. Straight in the center, says he. That should just pop down. Has that gone down okay? We'll see. Let's try the foil. There we go. Perfect. Thanks for watching. See you next time.